Hi, in this tutorial, we're going to show you how to create a 3D ambisonic spatial mix for headphones and loudspeakers using two free tools, Reaper and the IEM plugin suite. So what is spatial audio? Well, let's think about what actually happens when we increase the number of speakers when playing back a sound. If we played a sound from a single speaker, the speaker functions as a point source, with the resulting audio being dimensionless. If we add another speaker to get a stereo array, we could reproduce the sound along a horizontal line connecting the speakers. If we add further speakers to create a surround sound system, we can now recreate this sound on the horizontal plane connecting the speakers. And if we add more speakers above and below this plane, we have the possibility of recreating this sound in three dimensions. When working with sound being reproduced in 2D and 3D, we can be said to be working with spatial audio. The traditional approach to this has been to treat the extra speakers as an extension of the stereo array, sending one channel to each extra speaker. This is what is done in 5.1 or 7.1 setups, and is referred to as a channel-based approach. There are some drawbacks to this approach though. For example, the mix is speaker-specific, meaning that if we create a 7.1 mix for 8 loudspeakers, and then play it back on a 5.1 system, there might be quite a lot of translational issues. A different approach is to use each channel to represent some information about the sound field. This is the approach employed by Ambisonics. In contrast to channel-based approaches, in Ambisonics, each audio channel carries the information of a spherical harmonic of the sound field, which you can see here. When mixing, we don't assign tracks to channels, but rather mix by placing tracks within the sound field, which is then encoded into however many channels we wish. This encoded format is called B format. When it comes time to play our mix, we can then decode the B format to fit our speaker array. This means that we have the advantage of our mix being speaker independent. We can decode our mix onto any array or number of speakers, or even for headphones, a process called binauralization. As you can imagine, if we use more channels to represent more spherical harmonics, this representation of the sound field becomes more accurate. This means that the localization of sound sources becomes easier and that the sweet spot between the loudspeakers becomes larger. We can choose how many spherical harmonics we wish to reproduce through the ambisonics order. If you want more information on this, check out our accompanying blog post. In this tutorial, we're going to create a 3D mix and then encode it in seventh order ambisonics. We'll decode it binaurally to monitor the mix and then show you how to decode it as first order onto our four speaker array. We're going to use Reaper as a DAW because it allows you to create up to 64 channel tracks, which is perfect for seventh order ambisonics. And we're going to use the IEM plugin suite to do the encoding and decoding. So here we have a Reaper session with a basic mix with some levels set. No panning or any other effects at the moment. The first thing that we want to do is change the number of channels on each track to 64. We click on routing and under track channels set this to 64 and do this for all tracks. Next we want to create a bus which we'll use to apply master effects and send our encoded mix to our decoders. We want to set the track channels here to 64 too and importantly not send it to the master. Now let's assign all the tracks to the bus. Now we want to create a binaural decoder so that we can monitor our mix. We'll also set this track to 64 channels and for the moment leave it sending to the master. In our effects we add the binaural decoder. Up here we can set the ambisonics order which is automatically set to seventh order as we assign 64 channels to the track. We can now go back into our buses routing and send it to the decoder. Importantly here we want to select a multi-channel source and send all 64 channels. With our binaural monitoring setup, we can now add a stereo encoder effect to each individual channel. Here, as well, we change the ambisonics order, but it should already be set to seventh order, as each track has 64 channels. Now our mix is binaural. However, everything is located directly in front at the center. So let's start placing some sources. We'll start by looking at the lead vocals. I know the if we open the stereo change, encoder, we have this nice visualization of where our track is located within the sound field. 
We can place our sources by moving the marker here, or we can use these three dials over to the right. Each controls a rotational angle, so if we change the azimuth, we can hear the vocals move around to the left and back. And the elevation, we can hear them move up above us. We'll come back to the roll and the width a little later. For the moment, let's place the vocals slightly upwards to the front. Now let's take a look at the drum overheads. We can see that this is a stereo track, and this is where we can use the roll and the width. If we increase the width, we can hear that the two tracks are spread out. So let's widen the drums a little. And if we change the roll, we can hear that the two tracks rotate around the central axis. So let's leave the overheads widened a little. So now we've placed some tracks within the sound cube. You can hear that the backing vocals and keys are placed behind you, the electric guitar is right above you, the acoustic guitar wide to the left, and the bass below. The IEM suite provides a plugin called the Energy Visualizer that lets us visualize and monitor our sound field. If we apply this to the bus, we can see that the energy levels match where we placed our tracks, and that we still have some free space in our sound field here and here. There are also some effects provided by the IEM suite such as an EQ, reverb, delay, and several compressors. So let's add a reverb to our bus and take another look at the visualizer. We can now see that the sound field is a lot fuller. There are several other plugins to explore in the IEM suite such as a directivity shaper that allows you to place individual frequency bands from a single sound source at different locations, and they're worth playing with. But now we'll show you how to send the mix to a speaker array. The first step is to create a new track for the loudspeaker decoding. We want to again set it to 64 channels, and we don't want to send it to the master. We can select a receive from the ambisonics bus, select multi-channel source, and 64 channels for our 7th order encoding. We now want to add the AIIRA decoder to this track. This decoder allows us to decode to our specific loudspeaker setup. We can see here that there is a loudspeaker setup already configured and represented by this shape here, with each box representing a speaker. What we'll first do is remove all of these and add four speakers for our setup. Now our setup is quadraphonic and 2D, so let's first of all set the elevation of the speakers to zero degrees. We can now see that they are all on one plane, but the locations aren't correct. If we imagine a listener in the sweet spot of our setup, they'll have one speaker at 45 degrees, one at 135 degrees, one at 225 degrees, and one at 315 degrees. So let's set that. However, as our setup is 2D, the decoder has no way of knowing where the bottom and the top of the sound field should be. So what we need to do is add two more so-called imaginary speakers, equally distant from our ground plane, so that the decoder knows that our speaker setup is meant to be located on a central horizontal plane. Let's add one above, at azimuth 0 and elevation 90, and one below, at azimuth 0 and elevation minus 90. For both of these, we select the imaginary box. We now assign each speaker to the correct channel. Now we can see our speaker setup. And we can see here that the plugin tells us that this is a suitable setup. We select the first order decoding and then calculate our decoder. If we look at the channel strip now, we can see that there are four channels. Now we'll go into the channel routing. We can select our hardware output, which in this case is our interface, and select the four channel output, and select the channels with our signal. And now we can hear that we've decoded onto our speakers. We hope that you've enjoyed this tutorial, 
and have fun continuing to explore the possibilities of the IEM plugin suite and spatial audio.